Hello everybody and welcome to another edition of Potty Boy Plays. Now today your host Potty Boy is going to be playing Thunderblade for the Commodore 64. This was a request by uh, Lawn Boys Post 1975. Uh, basically he, he did a view of the, uh, he did a, he took a look at the arcade version of the game and I said to him, I said have you seen the Commodore 64 version? And he said, uh, and he said no, no I haven't but I'd love to see it. Anyway here it is. Um, let's, let's start the game. And as you can as you can see, it, technically this is a very impressive uh, conversion. I mean, uh, you can see how they've done the uh, how they've ma managed to simulate the uh, the sprite scaling and whatnot on the uh, arcade game in a similar sort of way, um, whereby it's like each building is made up of different layers. Um, I, I mean, gra gra graphically, this is this is a real you know this is technically quite technically a very impressive game. And you can see I've been shot down straight away. <laughs> um, of course, the original arcade game was done by Sega, released in about 87, 88. And of course, that one was uh, very infamous, infamous for its like, sprite scaling and whatnot and things. You could uh, you could zoom in and out the uh, the level and things. Now, this is a, basically a space era type level. Now, this is where things really do get impressive. I mean, I mean, yeah, this for Commodore 64, this does look absolutely amazing. Um, I mean, the, how it does all the sprite scaling and stuff is incredible. Uh, but there's actually um, on the second level, which unfortunately I don't get to in this video. Uh, actually, on the second level, the, the sprite scale on that is so impressive uh, that yeah, I was just gobsmacked. Uh, it, this really is uh, technically a very impressive port. And in terms of playability, yeah, it plays pretty well. Um, well, I think the only thing I don't like is uh, you know, I just uh, died. <laughs> uh, but the only thing I don't. don't uh, I think the only thing I don't like about, uh, about this game is uh, that on the uh, is that on the behind the behind the helicopter scene sort of thing. It's like you you can't see your normal bullets. You, you can't see what you can't see where you shoot. Now that's the only criticism I have with this uh, with this version. Uh, in my in my eyes, this is a this is a very very polished conversion. It's it's um you know it's very accurate to the arcade game. Anyway, let's uh, let's give it another go. Oh, Pepsi. Yeah, I love a bit of Pepsi. Coke, Coke or Pepsi, I don't mind. Which is your favourite? <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, it, this is so technically amazing. It's perhaps maybe I, I think say I think the frame rate is a, li is a bit jerky, but it's it's expected. I mean, the, the sprite scaling on this is yeah, it's really impressive because obviously the Commodore 64 didn't have sprite scaling. It did have a lot of hardware scrolling and things, but um, but sprite scaling stuff was. Um, uh, was not invented until many years after the Commodore 64 was was released. Really, um, yeah, it's this bit here, the behind the helicopter. You, you can see your missiles drop to the ground, but you can't you can't really see where you're firing bullets unless you move up or down, uh, which is a bit annoying because sometimes you're pressing your fire button and then you're wondering if your helicopter's actually shooting at all. Uh, there's no visual feedback. That's what it is. <laughs> but overall, yeah, this is a this is quite an impressive conversion. I do like this one a lot. Um, according to Lawn's Boys Post, like, Lawn's, Lawn's Boys Post uh, 1975, um, said that said the Spectrum version was very good as well. Which I am, I've, I've not seen the Spectrum one. Uh, well, well, actually, I tell you, I think I might have seen a few screenshots of it, but um, I've never actually seen it in action. Well, at least I don't recall seeing it in action anyway. Um, but yeah, this this is a really, this is a really really great version. Oh yeah, this is another top down bit coming up. Uh, basically, you got this. Uh, you got this battleship going up. You can also go backwards as well, which I think is pretty neat. Uh, but I think you can only go backwards for like a couple of seconds. Um, now, of course, out of the controls working in this game, so in the arcade one, obviously you had your, you had a separate button for your missiles and your bullets. In this one, just pressing the fire button does both. Um, so it's like you don't have to worry about pressing a separate key for uh, uh, shooting the missiles. You, you, you just shoot your bullets and missiles all at the same time, which I think is a good idea. That saves, saves the uh, having to reach over to press the space bar or something like that. And uh, overall, it's, uh, this is a this is a really really great conversion. Sorry guys, I'm, it's it's the heat. <laughs> heat, it's making me tired. <laughs> yeah, very impressive conversion. I do like this one a lot. Um, oh hang on, just didn't change my name. I almost put that almost put down Poppy Boy. <laughs> yeah, thinking ahead of myself. But yeah, this is this is a. Really excellent conversion, guys. Uh, uh, yeah, it's not not the best game on Commodore 64, uh, but it's it's very impressive. I think the reason why, reason why this one is quite impressive because this one was actually planned by Chris Butler, as it says there, 
uh, who also did Power Drift. Uh, and they, they, yeah, he's a, he also did Space Hero as well for Elite. Uh, so he did, so he's quite prolific. He did a few, uh, did a couple of conversions. Uh, anyway, guys, uh, I'm coming to end this video now. I shall be back soon with another video. And in the meantime, goodbye for now.